Longtime CM Punk friend and former in-ring adversary, Brian Danielson headed up a small disciplinary committee that made the decision to fire CM Punk from AEW, according to Fightful. Danielson was flanked on the three-person committee by AEW General Counsel Chris Peck and an outside attorney that came together quickly after the events of August's All In. AEW's VP Mega Parekh was not involved as she had already stepped down from a majority of her duties to focus on Tony Khan's NFL team instead. Fightful's report said Danielson was said to have spoken to the roster when addressing them about Punk's termination and noted that the decision was a particularly hard one. He cited the positive that CM Punk brought and his long-standing friendship with him, but said that it was the decision that he had to make. On Monday night, Danielson tweeted the following, My dad always told me the right thing is often the hardest thing to do. It won't always make the most money. It won't always be the most popular, but it's still the right thing. Hashtag AEW. Punk was fired by AEW for cause in early September after a review of the aforementioned incident at All In between himself and Jack Perry that also reported included Punk lunging at AEW head Tony Khan backstage during the skirmish. Fightful reported that Danielson remains on the committee as he is also responsible for issuing fines when those issues arise. And more CM Punk news. While it won't be his first feud, there are reportedly plans for CM Punk to work a program against Roman Reigns in WWE. Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated reports that WWE has plans for a Punk Reigns feud. A timeline for when that program is expected to take place was not given. Though Barrasso notes that the first feud in Punk's WWE comeback will be against World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins. Writing that there is plenty of reason to believe that there could be a CM Punk Seth Rollins match as the main event for the opening night of WrestleMania 40. Reigns defending his undisputed WWE Universal Championship against Cody Rhodes appears to be the leading option for WrestleMania 40. At Survivor Series last Saturday night, Punk made his shocking return to WWE. It was his first time appearing for the company since walking out in 2014. Barrasso also spoke with unnamed members of the WWE and and AEW rosters about CM Punk. Sane, speaking with multiple members of the active WWE roster, Sports Illustrated confirmed that there are concerns about how Punk will integrate himself in the locker room. Saying that the feeling is reminiscent of the WWE returns of Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall in 2002, when there was a heightened concern about their reputation and actions in WCW. But all three did business in WWE, which is exactly what Punk is expected to do. Speaking with a handful of AEW talent, the feeling as Punk will be on his best behavior in the beginning in WWE. But historically, multiple people added, CM Punk's runs do not end well. Barrasso confirmed that Paul Triple H Levesque and Nick Khan engineered Punk's WWE return, which was first reported by our own Dave Meltzer. Meltzer noted that the deal for Punk to return came together about 10 days before Survivor Series. Following Survivor Series, CM Punk made his return to WWE Raw on Monday for the first time in nearly 10 10 years. Punk closed out the show with an in-ring promo saying it looked like hell froze over. He said he had been feeling more like himself since his return at Survivor Series. And that an American dream once told him that as long as you speak from the heart, you cannot go wrong because it's the truth. Saying that the truth is he's home and that this is where he belongs. Punk said that a wise man once told him he'd have to leave in order to get everything he wanted. And he said he was back to get everything he wanted out of WWE. He also also brought up his wife, former WWE star AJ Lee, saying she's fabulous and sends her regards. Punk said that everyone is happy to see him back. It's been nothing but smiles and love, aside from a few people who are afraid of the truth because the brass ring is in his back pocket and they can't grab it. He finished the promo by saying he wasn't there to make friends, that he was there to make money. WWE is also claiming that CM Punk's return at Survivor Series was the most social moment in WWE history. Moving on, not everyone was happy when it was announced earlier this year that WWE would merge with UFC to create the new TKO. A recent lawsuit by an Ohio pension fund that became unsealed last week claims that then WWE executive chairman Vince McMahon and other board members moved for a quick sale and a favorable one to Endeavor, founded by McMahon's friend and former agent Ari Emanuel. The Hollywood Reporter was the first to report the news on Monday. TKO 
CEO has yet to respond publicly to the suit. The reason for the suit is that the investors feel the deal was done to allow McMahon to stay on as a TKO executive chairman and avoid further complications and a possible ouster due to sexual misconduct allegations that arose in the summer of 2022. In doing so, the suit claims WWE turned away from two all-cash offers that they perceived as having better terms. The other potential bidders weren't identified, but were referred to as major institutions with significant access to capital that had compelling reasons to close an acquisition of WWE. From the report, according to the complaint, this included undisclosed companies submitting cash offers at $95 to $100 and $90 to $97.50 per share. But because they contemplated cashing out WWE stockholders and barred McMahon from rolling over his shares, which would have signaled his complete ouster from the wrestling world, the board never bothered to make counter proposals, the suit states. The suit claims that the $95.66 per share prize that the WWE Endeavor merger closed at was less than the other offers. They claim McMahon and other board members conjured up a sham sales process to put Endeavor in the driver's seat and exclude other bidders seeking to ax Vince McMahon. He, Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, George Barrios, and Michelle Wilson were also named in the suit which seeks to represent all stockholders who cashed out their shares in the merger. Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, and Frank Riddick were also called out for getting a combined $25 million in cash bonuses thanks to the deal. On to our next piece of news, Cody Rhodes is entering the Royal Rumble. After talking about his team's win at Survivor Series, Cody Rhodes said he will be the first to declare for the WWE Royal Rumble, which takes place on January 29th in Florida. On Tuesday, WWE issued a press release announcing that Survivor Series had the highest viewership, largest gate, and best merchandise sales in the history of Survivor Series, saying that viewership was up 44% versus the previous record set in 2022, with 17,138 in attendance. The event broke the previous Survivor Series gate record set in Brooklyn in 2021. The company has announced that NXT Vengeance Day 2024 will take place from F&M Bank Arena in Clarksville on Sunday, February 4th. And before we close off the video, some AEW news news. AEW World Champion MJF has suffered a torn labrum, but he isn't vacating his title. On Monday, MJF announced that he underwent an MRI on his left shoulder. The MRI revealed that he has a torn labrum, but MJF vowed that he'll still be making his scheduled AEW World Championship defense against Samoa Joe at December's World's End pay-per-view. MJF has since deleted the tweet where he announced that he has a torn labrum. That's a wrap for this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and please do not forget to give it a like and subscribe to F4W Online for plenty more wrestling news and coverage.